We are showing you the good and the bad and the ugly to show you that this is what Tourette's is like. But no one at this point is believing us anymore because of all of the people that have faked it. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Ticking Together. As always, the goal of this channel is to provide education about and to raise awareness as to what it's like living with Tourette's syndrome. In this video, I wanted to talk more about how to tell if someone is faking Tourette's syndrome and the whole TikTok faking, fake claiming clout thing on TikTok. But if you're new here, ugh, let me just back it up. I got rice. My name is Carly, I'm 23 years old and I have Tourette's syndrome. I was clinically diagnosed when I was 12 years old by my psychiatrist and I have had tics as young as three years old, but I really first started noticing debilitating tics when I was 10. From 10 onwards, I have increasingly developed more and more tics that have been pretty brutal to live with, but I also am very good at suppressing, which means a lot of the people in my real life I've hid my Tourette's from. With all that, ugh. With all that being said, let's get into the debate of how do you tell if someone is faking Tourette's. Ugh. I have made a video on this before, um, but I wanted to reiterate that there really is no surefire way to tell if someone is faking Tourette's syndrome, which is really, really unsettling if you think about it. Ugh. I know for me, myself, I have been fake claimed on TikTok numerous times, saying that I am a fraud, that I'm fake, my dog's growling. <laughs> Saying that I'm a fraud or I'm a fake or that I'm just not valid um, because my tics don't look like the norm. Here's the thing guys. Hi. Ugh. There is no one box fit mold that everyone with Tourette's syndrome will fit into. There is no norm of tics. So while it is true that a lot of people think, oh, if this person doesn't look like this person, if A doesn't look like B, they clearly don't have Tourette's. That is where you're wrong and where society needs to change. Ugh. In general, fake claiming people is so freaking brutal. It is so mean because if you're fake claiming someone who is genuinely valid, it really can affect their self-esteem and their confidence. I know there was that whole dilemma about ticks and roses on TikTok and I have seen some evidence and I won't go into detail, but I do believe that in that case, ticks were very forced and not necessarily genuine, but that's not to say that they're not valid because I can't tell if someone's ticks are real or not. Um, at the end of the day, everyone's ticks are different. There is echolalia and echopraxia, ugh, which means that people with Tourette's syndrome can interchange their ticks and swap out their ticks. So for example, if I were to see someone on the street with Tourette's or without Tourette's saying, hey man, what's up? Ugh. My brain might say, I gotta say that too. And I might say, hey man, what's up as a tick? Or if I see someone doing this, for example, just a random example, my ticks in my brain with echopraxia may have to do this repetitively because that's just what Tourette's is about. When we see something that sticks in our brain, a lot of the time we will repeat that as a tick, as our own tick, and sometimes they will stick. I do want to mention that a lot of the time people on TikTok will accuse others of faking when they do ticks on demand. And this is something that I wanted to address in this video. Ugh. For example, I've seen a lot of people say, oh, when you mention a tick, it just doesn't automatically come up. And that's not always the case. For me specifically, when I think about a certain tick, I will end up doing that tick because it in itself is a trigger for that specific tick. So don't be quick to judge and say, oh, if they're saying hi is their tick, hi, like that. Don't be quick to, uh, hi. Don't be quick to assume that they're faking just because they mentioned a tick and later on had that exact same tick because that is a massive trigger in the Tourette's syndrome community that I don't think a lot of people realize. Another thing I wanted to mention is that Tourette's syndrome is not a mental illness. And this misinformation has been going around for quite some time online that Tourette's is a mental illness. And guess what? It isn't. It is a neurological disorder, which means there is a very clear difference between the two. Tourette's actually directly affects the neurons in your brain and causes misfiring signals in the brain, which is very different than a mental illness. A lot of people on TikTok are quick to assume that someone is faking and don't give them the benefit of the doubt. And here's another thing that I really wanted to mention is that tics don't happen all the time and suppression is a thing. Just to preface this, I never, ugh, I never encourage suppression because it is absolutely 
draining, painful, exhausting, horrible. It's the worst thing ever. But just to let you know, suppression is possible. And so another thing I've seen in the ticks and roses kind of debate is that, oh, videos from their past showcase them not ticking. And this is a little bit of an iffy thing for me because there are a ton of videos online of me not ticking when I was younger. And this is because I suppress. And it's something that I'm really good at. I am highly medicated. I'm on three medications a day for my Tourette syndrome, two of which are antipsychotics. And they're pretty intense drugs. But because I'm on these medications, since I was 12, I am able to suppress my tics and hold them in for an extended period of time. So if I'm singing a song on YouTube or if I'm talking about something for a few minutes, a lot of the time I will hold in my tics for the whole time. But another thing I wanted to let you guys know is that subtle tics are totally a thing. So before you judge someone on TikTok or on any social media platform for faking Tourette's, Keep in mind that subtle tics are very, very common. And a lot of the time, you might not even realize that someone in your life has Tourette syndrome because not all Tourette's cases are super severe and grandiose. For example, I have a lot of tics that you can't even see that I'm doing right now. For example, I am tensing my butt cheeks together, I am wiggling my toes, and I'm clenching my legs. These are all things that I've learned how to do to redirect bigger tics, mainly to cater to other people to show them, hey, I'm not ticking and I am normal. And this is another place that society has gone really wrong is that saying that people with Tourette syndrome are weird or crazy or all they do is swear because as a young kid, I immediately thought, oh, I must hide this. No one can ever know. So I worked with a bunch of therapists and doctors learning how to redirect my tics into smaller movements, which really don't satisfy the urge, but they do kind of make me able to pass in public as a normal individual. So again, before you claim that someone's faking, keep in mind their tics could be extremely subtle and you may not even realize that they're ticking. I have a tick where I blink my eyes a lot and I do it every day, like all the time. And I know blinking is a normal phenomenon, but mine is a little bit more advanced and I think about it before I blink and I'll do different severity levels, different hardness of the blinking. And that is a tick that a lot of people wouldn't even bat an eye at. No <laughs> pun. Pun intended. So that's just something to keep in mind. A lot of people will have extremely subtle tics, such as just um, maybe moving their arm a little bit or blinking their eyes, scrunching their nose like this. Um, a lot of people will have subtle tics and social media has really showcased the extreme cases of Tourette syndrome. Whereas that's not the case for everyone. A lot of people with Tourette's have very minimal tics. And a lot of the time, vocal tics aren't the main focus of Tourette's. Hi. Ew. I got rice. I got rice. And you'll notice there, I did mention vocal tics. I got rice. And then I had some vocal tics, which again is an example of ew. mentioning tics causing them to be a trigger. It's a very strange thing to live with Tourette's because your tics are always coming and going. Um, but it's just, uh, it's just really strange. Another thing I wanted to mention that I've seen people online saying is that you can't tell what tick is gonna come out before it happens, and that is completely wrong in some individuals. For me, I know exactly what tick's gonna happen before it happens because I get a premonitory urge or a buildup in my body, especially with motor tics and some vocal tics. So for me, when I feel like I have to jerk my neck, I will get like this burning, tingling sensation in my neck where immediately I know, oh, I have to tick my neck. I don't necessarily know the exact movement I'm gonna do, but I know my neck has to tick. Same with whatever other tick. And with vocal tics, I will feel a bubbling in my throat and usually something in my brain is telling me say this. Other times though, something completely random just comes out. Hi. But that's something that I wanted to mention as well. Another misconception that I wanted to clear up is that people say that tics cannot be one-offs and that is also completely wrong, at least for me. I know when I have vocal tics, a lot of the time they're completely one-offs. I'll say something once and never repeat it again. But a lot of my motor tics, I will have to repeat the same movement over and over again. But again, with motor tics, I also don't always have to do the same movement over and over again. Sometimes they can be one-offs as well. I see a lot of content creators, even with Tourette syndrome, saying that their tics never are one-off. And for me, they are actually. In my Tourette's Against Humanity videos, I suppress for so much time that as soon as I stop consciously suppressing in my brain, my tics just come out and I say whatever the heck happens. And those are completely one-offs for the most time. So these are a lot of things that people say about people with Tourette's syndrome online, that they accuse people of faking. And there are so many little things to Tourette's that not everyone realizes. 
and literally every single person with Tourette's will experience it differently. That's, I truly genuinely believe that. It is such a misunderstood disorder. And something that's really bothered me is that originally Hollywood made it into a joke in the way that, oh, people with Tourette's syndrome only swear, which is caused by coprolalia, which is the involuntary utterances of obscenities, swearing, inappropriate comments. Um, and fun fact, coprolalia is derived from the Latin word copros, which means feces or poop. So coprolalia really means S-H-I-T, talk. Because lalia means to talk, fun fact. But it's just really annoying because Hollywood originally made Tourette's into a joke. And then it kind of got a little bit more normalized, a little bit more destigmatized. But now with TikTok becoming so prominent and a lot of creators sharing their stories and being so brave and sharing, hey, I have Tourette's, a lot of people have really turned that stigma around into everyone with Tourette's syndrome is faking. You can't trust anything you see on the internet. When in reality, a lot of us are coming forward and sharing our stories for awareness purposes and saying, hey, you know what? Like we are showing you the good and the bad and the ugly to show you that this is what Tourette's is like. But no one at this point is believing us anymore because of all of the people that have faked it. And it's just a really, really tricky situation because as I've said, you can never really tell. Ew. Ew. You can never really tell if someone is faking Tourette's. It's just, sure, you may be able to, like the really obvious ones, of course, of course you can tell. But the people who are out there who claim to have Tourette's and are genuinely advocating for awareness and a better world for people with Tourette's, I don't know in what world it would be beneficial for them or you to fake a neurological disorder and to make you believe something that they don't have. I don't know. I just think that people that are coming forward and saying, I have Tourette's, this is my story, and are showing everything, not just the funny stuff. Those are the people that you can generally believe in because I know a lot of people on TikTok, for example, will showcase the funny stuff only. And that's a little bit of a red flag because Tourette's in itself is really not funny. It's not a joke, it's not quirky, it's really annoying and it's not fun to live with. It affects every part of my life. I know the tics are the most noticeable thing, but a lot of my behavior and a lot of my personality is based around Tourette's syndrome. People with Tourette's have rage issues, they have impulse controls, they have texture sensitivity, all sorts of stuff like that. And so it's not just the tics, it's really not funny. It's so many more things than just what you see on TikTok when creators showcase the funny stuff, because it's really not funny. But then again, providing education through comedy is acceptable. It's just not when it's the only thing you do. Tourette's is genuinely an awful thing to live with. I never want to sugarcoat it. I never want to make people think, oh, this is fun. It really sucks. It's not a good time. It, it's really embarrassing. It makes me feel like a horrible individual when I say things that I don't mean. Hi. And I just wanted to let you guys know that before you accuse someone of faking Tourette's and before you fake claim someone, just keep in mind that that's really harmful. And for me, I've, like I said, I've been fake claimed so many times. And it's just like, why would someone do that? Because deep down, I know like, yeah, I have a diagnosis. I'm on so many meds, like it's ruined my life. And when someone comes and says that I'm faking, I immediately think, why? But I, again, they don't know me. They're just seeing a minute to three minute clips on TikTok of my life. So just keep in mind before you fake claim that it can really affect someone negatively. And it's not the nicest thing to do, even if they are faking. Like, I just wish the world would spread more positivity and kindness because people are just so brutal and mean. So again, you can never really tell if someone is faking Tourette syndrome, but there are a few things you can do to just be a kind person and realize, hey, maybe this person isn't faking, maybe they're just having a good tick day because people don't tick 24 seven every five seconds. I'm gonna start suppressing starting now for a while and just show you guys that I can sit here without ticks because when I'm in public at work, if anyone were to ever see me that sees me on YouTube at work, they would be like, this girl's a fraud because I suppress my tics at work to the extreme. But again, this isn't to say that I don't have subtle tics. I will be walking around my aisles, tensing my butt. I will be wiggling my fingers or tensing my toes or doing things that are very small. And this is something that I just feel like I wish people knew. I wish more people knew that Tourette's can be very subtle and it's not always woo all over the place, you know, cause that's just the stuff that society has really latched onto and that's not always the case. So please, please, please keep, 
I checked. <laughs> Please keep that in mind before you accuse someone of faking or even if you just see someone with Tourette syndrome, just be nice to them and know like, this is a really challenging thing to live with. And to the people that are faking, like why are you doing this? And I never want to accuse anyone because I know how harmful it is to accuse someone. But speaking of ticks and roses, again, a lot of their videos led me to believe that, hey, maybe this isn't valid. But I never want to just judge people because that's so rude and it can really ruin someone's day. So this is just the end of this video. Just keep in mind, you can never tell if someone is faking. But that isn't to say you should be faking or people are faking. It's such a weird topic to think about because why would you fake a neurological disorder? Don't do it but also don't accuse people because that's rude. If you liked this video or learned anything, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below saying hi, telling me what you want to see in future videos, or letting me know if you relate to this, if you agree with it, if you disagree, I would love to start a conversation in the comments. I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and ring that notification bell to stay tuned to all of my content. I would really genuinely appreciate that. As always, we're learning together, we're laughing together, and we're ticking together. Bye. Before I go, I just want to show you my puppy. Daisy. Look at me, look here, look. Hi, my love, what a good girl.